It was in the language of Israel that the Psalms were sung in the Temple of Jehovah. Why should the Gospel speak to England in Latin, the language of ancient Rome? I shall bring the scriptures to England for Englishmen to read. And the Lord God spoke through his prophet Jeremiah and said that a horrible thing had happened in the land. The prophets prophesied lies, he said, and the priests ruled by their own authority. And this was Israel, God's chosen people plucked from the bondage of Egypt and brought to the promised land. The priests ruled by their own authority. And what can we say of England now? What can we say of our coarse monks, our greedy priests and our pompous prelates? Theirs is not the gospel of Christ, but a trade, and a profitable trade at that. Think of it, they want money for everything. They want money for baptisms, money for churchings, money for weddings, for buryings, for penances, for soul masses, for chalices, bells. You poor sheep. The parson shears, the vicar shaves, the priest scrapes, the friar pears. All we lack is a butcher to tear off the skin. You pray to the saints. You make images of them. You light candles to them. If these images can see and hear, perhaps they hunger also. And if they hunger, why do you not make their bellies hollow and put food and drink inside? The prophet Isaiah, he wrote of a man who cut down a tree to light a fire to bake some bread. And when he was warmed and filled, he took the remains of that wood and carved an image. Then he fell down before it and worshipped it, saying, You are my God, deliver me. Did Isaiah laugh when he wrote that? As our Lord said, Hotan de elthe e kainos top pneumates ale. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. But the church has so many persuasions. One man follows Duns Scotius, another Thomas Aquinas, another Bonadventure. If all these learned men are in contradiction one with each other, how can we know right from wrong but by God's word? Without God's word, we are a nation of blind men. And what if the Pope is at variance with God's laws? I defy the Pope and all his laws. If God spares my life, I will see to it that a ploughboy shall know more of the scriptures than you do. I answer thus with a clear conscience before God and man that I have never maintained, affirmed, averred or asserted anything contrary to the plain meaning of God's holy scriptures on these alone, and these alone I stand. The fruit that grows on a tree does not make the tree good or bad. It only makes known whether the tree is a good tree or a bad tree. And works do not make a man good or bad. They only make it plain to other men whether he who performs those works is good or bad. A man is reconciled before God by faith alone. And works serve only to make this justification known before men. Such is the contention of the Apostle Paul, as it is written. By grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. To the marking of burden, I believe, right worshipful, that you are not unaware of what may have been determined concerning me. Wherefore, I beg your lordship, and that by the Lord Jesus, that if I am to remain here through the winter, you will permit me to be sent from my goods a warmer cap. For I suffer greatly from cold in the head, and am afflicted by perpetual catarrh, which is much increased in this cell. <laughs> a warmer coat also, and a piece of cloth to patch my leggings. And I ask to be allowed to have a lamp in the evening. But most of all, I beg and beseech your clemency that you will permit me to have the Hebrew Bible, Hebrew grammar, and Hebrew dictionary, that I may pass my time studying. But if any other decision has been taken concerning me, 
to be carried out before the winter. I will be patient, abiding the will of God to the glory of the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ. Whose spirit I pray may ever direct your heart. Amen.